Horizon Hobby just released a massive new update to the Spectrum ecosystem that changes literally everything. And now you can even use my iX setups on your NX radio. And instead of covering this massive new development, I'm focusing on this instead. Greetings, I'm John. This is Two Brothers RC, and this. is the Precision Aerobatics Katana 60. I promise I will talk more about the Horizon news when I can, but for now, let's talk about this awesome Woody, because this thing is just too good. At one point, I literally could not shut up while flying it, which isn't too different from how I am normally, but stick with me here, I was having too much fun. Today I'm going to cover the following review points. Landing gear, flight time, agility, fit and finish, and avionics and lighting. Of course, these review segments will be specific to 3D woodies of this particular size of aircraft. Like most of our new vids lately, I'll be letting live voiceover do the majority of the review work here, especially in the agility section, because talking in the studio doesn't capture what I was thinking while I was flying. Agility is but one of the five areas in which Katana shines. If you've been around the channel for a while, you might remember the Katana 52 video from last year. While only being a little bigger than its little sister, the Katana 60 flies like a significantly larger airplane. It actually feels very comparable to the Flex Twin Otter in how it responds, which itself is a massive bird. Flying on 150 travel with 100% rate and 50% expo across the board, I got a very responsive airframe that just loves being thrown around, and it never felt squirrely or like it would bite me at any point. If I told it to do something, it did it and didn't complain. Now I'm using the Harrier flap mix that PA calls for a little bit to help the plane stabilize and and Harrier conditions. You can see both ailerons are reflexed upward as I'm pulling the elevator. It's a very simple mix. I can show you guys how to do it. If you join our Discord server, hop in the tech and setup channel. The days of me doing dedicated setup videos are basically over. I don't mind adding them to the back of a vid if it needs it, but this plane is such a simple setup, you don't really need it. All you need to do is make a flapper on configuration or a dual aileron configuration, and you can basically do it with a Spectrum radio. I can't tell you how to do it with other ones, but it does make the plane have almost no wing rock. It's very nice. I have a gnat in my eyeball. I need to scratch. Oh my God, that was driving me insane. Very hard to fly when you've got bugs that decide they want to live inside your your eyeball juices. So anyway, back into the Harrier flaps. You can see the plane stabilizes real nice with it. You just have to add a little bit more thrust because you are adding more drag and the plane is being pushed down by both ailerons being reflexed into the sky. So it is a little weird feeling, but once you get used to it, it actually does stabilize them quite a bit. If you turn it off, it flies pretty good too. With the vortex generators, there's almost no wing rock at all to speak of. You can hop right into rolling Harriers out of it too. Turn it around. Stay an inverted Harrier a little bit while we talk about agility some more. PA is very accurate when they say you don't need a whole lot of stick input because the way these planes are built, they are recommended to be flown with a neutral center of gravity, which makes it very easy to get around with minimal stick inputs because the plane is very responsive to everything you tell it to do. This thing flies like a dream, even if I'm getting a little close to the ground there. But you can see, as long as you don't freak out, you follow the Bene Gesserit litany against fear. Don't allow fear to control you, and you just fly and have fun. I do like the way the plane just dead stops with the Harrier flaps. It's quite nice. And then you can just take it right out of that keeps it from climbing because the ailerons push the wings down so it makes it flop. So cool. Transitions right into high beta knife edge, no problem. Throttle up, switch sides. I'm not a 3D master by any stretch of the imagination. Many people can do this better than me. In fact, I encourage you, if you can do this better than me, show me how you do it, because I want to learn. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff I want to learn about how to fly. But I try to teach other people too. Uh, this is a great airframe to learn on if you want to get to that point. Uh, obviously, I would not normally recommend that you treat it as a trainer. It's definitely anything but, but you could use it as a 3D plane to learn 3D with. Uh, it is so responsive. It does pretty much everything you tell it to do. It's quite nice, actually. 
bring it in lower. Just kind of circling so I can get it down for an inverted Harrier pass in front of us. All that wing rock you saw was actually me just kind of second guessing myself and trying to correct for stuff that didn't need to be corrected. It's funny, I'll do the same maneuvers in the simulator and I'll plow planes into the ground doing this kind of stuff because it doesn't feel the same. The physics are not the same. You can learn some of the stick movements for sure, but the way the planes fly in reality and your unmatched vision that you have, is it's kind of hard to replicate on a sim. This thing flies so freaking good, man. Straight into a hover takeoff. That's how much I trust this thing. Well, Harrier takeoff, but you know what I mean. I tried to get into a hover. I didn't enter it quite right, but I trust this thing very implicitly. It is so freaking good at what it does. PA really knows how to make some lightweight planes that fly amazingly well. I think by this point, those of you guys who have watched me long enough will know that when I really love a plane, I don't mind throwing it around because I can trust what it's going to do. In this one, I'm close to that point. I put quite a few batteries through this plane by this point in time. I almost implicitly trust it's going to do what I tell it to do, which is why I'm going to do a rolling harrier right here, right above the grass. And it would do better if I was a better pilot. I'm sure if you put somebody who's way more skilled than me into this plane, it would be much better looking. I love the way when you when you put it into a flat spin like that and then you give it just the right amount of elevator pressure, it, the butt just slides around like that. Ah, man, there's nothing like a good woody 3D plane. In the MXS video that I put out last Saturday by this point, I did mention that, you know, people who do complain about price, uh, they do have a valid point. These planes do cost a lot of money, but when you're flying something like a PA plane, this is the way this plane is set up right now is close to a thousand dollars. And this is what you pay for when you want something that performs to this level. I wish I had the stick skill to make this thing look as good as it truly is. If I was a competition pilot, I could make this thing look way better, uh, but I'm not. I'm just a YouTuber that with a big giant mouth and an ugly face and a butt that stinks. And I'm out here trying to make the best content that I can make for you guys. And I hope that it comes through that I love what I'm doing. God, I love knife edge spins. Um, it's just such a capable airframe. There is very little out there that I've flown that beats the way this thing flies. Look at that Harrier entrance. This is just good. Like, you pay for quality. When you get a PA plane, you are flying a quality machine. And you can call me a shill all you want. I don't care. I will gladly shill for PA airframes because these things fly like I've got a neural interface and the plane is doing what I think. Even if my thoughts are crappy and I can't make them coherent and good, it still flies to my capabilities. Hovering was a really good strength of the Katana. Once you get the nose up, it spins oh so good. 
a few micro corrections and you're good to go. I'm not going to tell you that this is a trainer plane, it's definitely not, but if you like what you're seeing here, you can work your way up to it. The FMS MXS doesn't fly dissimilar to the Katana 60, everything that happens with a smaller plane just happens faster, and it requires a faster reaction time. If you can fly the MXS, you can fly this Katana 60, probably better than you flew the FMS MXS even. Blows my mind how good this plane can fly. The bigger they get, the better they do fly for sure. All I want to see from PA now are some planes that are bigger than this. Like imagine this, but like twice as big. It would fly even better than this already does. Now we have the vortex generators and the wing side force generators on here. And we're doing pretty good with it. But I just, it blows my mind how good this thing can fly. It feels like a much bigger airframe than it actually is. And I'm, I'm just amazed at how good this thing really is. Now we don't get any money for helping sell these planes for PA. We like working with them because they're a local business. And honestly, I think you can see the quality in the products that we're showing here. Cause like, look at this thing go. I'm not the best 3D pilot out there by far. There are way better pilots out there than me. I am just a guy that knows how to do some maneuvers and kind of strings them together into a semi-coherent routine. But again, if I can do this, anybody can do it. And I just, the stick feel of this thing, I cannot get over how good this thing is. We're gonna just get it lower and lower and see if we can drag the wingtip in the grass just ever so slightly. Maybe not too much, I don't wanna break the plane. so graceful when it does that backflip. Now it does do waterfalls pretty well too. So if we were to go and do a wall and then do a waterfall, does them pretty well. But you can make it even more dramatic by using a flap mix, which causes the plane to really slide the butt around and makes it look better in my opinion. God, I cannot get enough of the snap hovers of this thing. Oh, and I just got blinded for a split second there with, <laughs> with that. Uh, <laughs> that's the one thing, the one downside to Balsa airframes. Yeah, they look better and they do look more like full scale planes with a nice shiny reflective covering, but that comes at the cost of the thing blinding you sometimes when the sun hits it just right. Oh yeah. That was the kind of flat spin I've been wanting to get where it doesn't even fall. Golly, this thing is a good plane. Getting a bit more comfortable with it now that I've flown it about 10 times so far. Just trying to get out there and make, you know, more than one day of flying because there's so many different things you can do with these planes. And you gotta kinda sometimes at least fly two days to cover everything, because there's so much you can do with them. Does pass the seven minute mark, therefore meeting all five criteria for flight time with 3D planes. Seven minutes and 16 seconds total. Not bad, that's on an SMC 2800 high voltage battery. There you go, SMC 2800. And yeah, let's go ahead and pop it on, take a look at our center of gravity with the 2800 pack. PA makes a pretty good lithium polymer pack, 2600. I do tend to like the SMCs, I have four of them. Now we are currently balancing right here, where my middle fingers are. So it should be right up where the, the front of the cockpit is. Yeah, just about. Yep. That's been the sweet spot for me. Love it so far. Another nice thing about that Harrier mix too, is you can use it as really effective air brakes to bring the plane to a dead stop very quickly on the ground. The gear setup on this plane is on par with the PA Ultimate AMR that we filmed earlier this year. Both planes feature the same quality soft wheels, which act as suspension for the stiff struts, something that you absolutely need for a 3D plane. Prop strikes can utterly decimate a motor box and completely ruin the airframe. Any flex in your gear is bad. This means that you need to learn to land it slowly and precisely, and here's how you do that. 
Now, when you do land a 3D plane like this, it is best to bring it in nice and slow, hold that nose up on the approach, and as it comes in, let the elevator pressure off, throttle back to zero, and let it naturally come to a stop where you can force the ailerons up. This mix that I'm demonstrating is super cool. This is what allows you to get mostly wing rock free Harriers, although the Vortex generators do a really good job of that themselves. I don't use it upside down, but I do have that option for it. This gives you a really powerful backflip. Let's turn the plane around so it's a little easier to see. This gives you a very powerful front flip. The both ailerons deflecting up or down provide a massive pitch moment to the plane, which really helps it a bit. You don't need it, but it's nice to have. So, so far, Katana, I loved the 52. I love the 60 even more. The Katana 52, when I set it up, I actually didn't use all the PA stock equipment. I used like really crazy high-end AGF servos. And these are pretty comparable to it at half the price. And they come as part of the iPass package with the plane. Absolutely love this thing. Everything about the Katana is high quality, from the servos to the carbon fiber linkages to the covering and assembly. The main issue that I have with anything PA related is that, well, they take a while to build. You don't have to cover the plane, but you do have to do a lot of epoxy work. You have to install hinges, you have to install servos, etc, etc. This is something that a lot of other brands have made easier, but on the plus side, you do truly get to make a PA plane your own, because the work you put into it determines how well it flies. Building the Katana 60 was made even easier using Starbond adhesives. They reached out via Instagram a while back and asked if I wanted to try out their glues. I assembled the Katana using their thin CA and some of their 5 minute epoxy on less critical areas of the plane. All of it has held up super well. The glue is way better than the Bob Smith stuff that I'd been using previously. It basically replaced all of my glue in one go. I don't see myself using anything else again. The servos in this bird are stellar, and they're very comparable to the AGF servos that I put into my Katana 52, which cost twice as much. They're metal too, which kind of goes without saying, but it's a review point. Now I won't have any mercy on any company that includes plastic servos in a plane this expensive and this big. That'll be the day. The ESC doesn't overheat at all when it's placed in the recommended position that PA calls for, and the motor mount is solid as all hell with a thick coating of epoxy that you, yourself, have to slop all over it. The battery can be positioned anywhere on the tray to make it more docile or way more aggressive. I think you know what I did with mine. Overall, the PA Katana 60 gets a 24 out of 25, simply exemplary. I don't normally get to review planes that are objectively this good. It's been a highlight of the year for me to fly this monster and really get to know it and how it handles. I look forward to making next year's follow-up vid on it because there's so much more I have left to learn as a 3D pilot. And if you're looking to improve your 3D game or you just want to get into it at all to begin with, the best piece of advice I can leave you with is to be humble and to always learn. You won't know everything. I certainly don't. There's always more to learn, always more to practice, always more to improve. The more you fly, the better you get. Pick up your own Katana 60 from the non-affiliate link in the description below. I think you can see for yourself that this bird belongs in your hangar. If you want help with the build, hop on our Discord server via bit.ly slash TBRC Discord and post in the 3D channel. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys again next week. My hands are slippery and I just about fell. It like slipped out of my hands. And if it wasn't for this battery latch being made out of metal and sticking so far out and sticking into the meat of my skin, I probably would have dropped it. But yeah, like I have no grip. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> Such is life when you're flying out here in the middle of the nearly July heat that we are experiencing right now. It's late June. Um, dude, this thing flies so freaking good. It's day one of us flying it. Eight minutes and 27 seconds of powered flight with an SMC 2800 lithium high voltage battery in this thing. Absolute monoplane perfection, just about, at least from what I've flown so far. Is it the best plane ever made? I don't know. I haven't flown enough to really tell you that. 
but is it one of my favorite 3D planes I've ever flown? Oh yeah, dude, absolutely. And I think you can see in the way I'm flying it and being a little bit more or less cautious with it than I normally would be that I can trust this thing to fly and not screw up on me so much. There were some things that I did with this that I wouldn't even do with the FMS MXS, which I was pretty comfortable with toward the end too. Beautiful fit and finish on this thing, easy to assemble, goes together in literally like a minute. It doesn't take much effort at all. Now the build is where, you, where PA gets you, you have to build the whole thing. Uh, it's a lot of work to build, so if you don't have the patience for that, I would tell you, highly advise you to consider finding a way to get some patience for it because nothing else flies like that that I've ever flown. So lightweight. I mean, I was hovering that thing with like 25% throttle. Stupid. So much power, so good overall. I can't stop fawning about it. People are gonna call me a PA show, and you know what? I, I just don't care because when you fly something this good, it's kind of hard not to fawn and gush over it. Uh, hit them up, precisionaerobatics.com. Katana 60 in red. Comes in green and yellow now too, if I'm not mistaken. Beautiful, but I think red is my personal favorite scheme. And they're, like I said, we don't work with them in any uh, professional capacity, so we're just reviewing them because they are awesome and we like what they make. Stupid cool stuff. Thanks for watching, guys.